going on, Abby family? It is your boy, K-Dub. This is K-Dub's High Five. Five rapid fire questions with your favorite hobby faces. And today we bring in one of the hardest working dudes on Twitter, the originator of Ghetto Stacking, my man, Polly at Polly Donuts on Twitter and Instagram is at Polly Runs, right? That's one of them, yeah. And okay. Polly Donuts as well. Yeah, Polly Donuts, but that's the main source is Twitter. Uh, how are you doing today, man? Amazing. Don't, this is not scissor. I know I'm from Houston, <laughs> but I figured I'd put water in a styrofoam cup to trick everybody. Gotta love it. Rep it, man. I'm doing fantastic. Oh, awesome, dude. Well, hey, I appreciate you joining me. How it works. I got five questions. They're all hobby related. Ready to take on the high five? I'm, I'm always ready. All right, man. First question for you. For people who don't know who Polly Donuts is, kind of walk us through a little bit what you feel like your role is in the social media hobby. Oh man, uh, it wasn't anything for a while. And then I, then I bought a box of cards off of eBay during the pandemic and the last dance. And it rekindled my hobbiness um, to all you, to all you uh, Jordan haters out there and 90s haters out there. Jordan is the goat, okay? We're gonna put it out there. And if I said it, it's as real as it gets. Um, so yeah, I bought a box of 96, Guy box, I think hey. it's 96, uh, black box, brown borders. And once again, I hit like seven Jordans in there. And I thought, this is amazing. I miss this so much. So then I went full bore back into buying cards and collecting and this and that. And then the, the air quotes flipper craze happened was already happening, I guess. Hmm. That's a better way to put it. It was definitely already happening. Um, I was late to the game, and I'll never, I'll still to this day, never forget walking into a Target and buying a, trying to buy a box of cards, and the lady goes, oh, you're never going to get cards. And I go, what are you talking about? I'm never going to get cards. There's cards here every day. I bring my kids shopping. Oh, not anymore. They're, they're always gone. There's people that wait in lines. I'm like, waiting in lines for what? It's cards. I I'm, I'm used to get them when I was a kid. And she goes, oh, no, no, no. That, there's people that wait in lines. Just go on eBay. Like this is the first person who taught me how to comp something. This no is a target employee. Oh yeah. Shout she out. goes, look, yeah, I don't remember her name, <laughs> but uh, she goes, look on, look on eBay and then click. Um, it's not filter. It's whatever that other thing is. And uh, click. Yes. Yeah. And then click sold and completed sales. Yeah. Pick, type, just type in whatever you are looking for. So I typed in, I'm like, $150. It says $26 right here, 25 bucks yeah. at the time. She goes, yeah. Do you see why they're waiting in line? I go, yeah. So I, I chased around boxes for a hot minute, but I was also opening like a crazy person. Gotcha. And my wife looked at me and goes, so what are we doing with this? <laughs> you know, what are we doing with these, you know, cards? I don't want to swear, but she used the F word. Um, and uh, I go, well, I think I can sell some. I see, I see guys selling them on Twitter. Hmm. So I, uh, well, actually, it was a little bit of that. And then I go, well, I can also sell them on eBay and Twitter is, is what was the exact sentence I said. So I sold like a couple cards on eBay. And I'm like, look, I sold so-and-so on eBay. She's like, how much money do you make? I'm like, I, I, like $3. She goes, that was such a waste of time. You, <laughs> you went to the store, you ripped the cards, and you do the shipping. And this and that, three bucks. I'm like, yeah, but three bucks, if I do that 100 times, that's $300. And she goes, you're going to do that 100 times? You're very optimistic. <laughs> so then I do it. I'm like, well, I'll do one of these stack sales I see. And uh, I saw a few guys doing them. Um, who I'll, you know, One guy I'll definitely shout out who, who really kind of pulled me into doing all this or kind of lit my fire, I guess you'd say. Um, he uh, and I was watching him do it. I'm like, okay, so I, I sell some, I, I post some cards and sell them. In my first sale, I finished, I think I posted like I was doing the grid thing, like A1, B1 kind of deal. And uh, I sold four bucks. So I go to my wife, she's like, How's your sale? And I'm like, I made four <laughs> bucks. And she's like, Okay, you know, you're you, you have time, you know, do it. it it's mm -hmm. not interfering with anything else. So I just kept at it and now here we are and get to stack and kind of just came to me very early on in the whole get to stacking that's I right it was ghetto stacking oh my every... god i love it i love it okay <laughs> every everybody always thinks it's ghetto stacking and i guess it ended up being a fun play on words yeah um i see it now and 
and uh, that's awesome. And it kind of just it, it stuck it, as it's still here today. I don't mm-hmm. think it's ever going anywhere. And yes. um, you know, I I I don't know really what my back to your original question on this long <laughs> rant because I have ADD like a bitch. Um, <laughs> it, it uh, I don't know. I just I I like to I love to sell cards, obviously, as anyone else does in the hobby. Um, but I, I do collect, I do have my cards that I'll keep forever. Although I will say this, anyone that says that sentence, I do believe there's a price for everything. Mm. Uh, and no matter the collector, yeah. I really feel deep, deep down inside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know that there's these cards that people have that they're going to be like, dude, this is my card. I'm never selling it. I go, yeah, if someone's got a billion dollars, you're not going to give that card away. Oh. So yeah, hundred uh, percent. Unless you're like, you know, Jeff Bezos or somebody, and you're like, I don't need to sell it. Okay, I get it. Um, so I, I don't know. I just try to put out fun stuff. I I really not a big negative guy. I hate it when I get a little yeah. uh, angry or negative because it's it's a very easy trope to to kind of play on, and uh, there's plenty of it out there, especially on Twitter. You know. People dog on Twitter all the time because it's all negative. Well, yeah, it is. But if you like look at Instagram and Facebook, it's just as negative. It's just portrayed in a different way. Yep, different life. You know? Right. Yeah. So like for as the hobby wise, I, I always make, I make the joke, like keep it real. Uh, and it's so hard in this made up reality we've created to keep it real hmm. and to kind of be like, yeah, I mean, Yes, we all try to make money. That is the goal of, of a lot of people is to make a living for their family. Whether that, the, sometimes people are making money for bad reasons, but I want to say that 90% of the time people are making money for good reasons sure. and they're trying to support their family, which is what, what I do with yeah. my cards. Um, and it's, to, to this day, I still, I'm, I'm always taken back by the fact that I'm, I get emotional about it that I'm able to sell cards yeah. on Twitter to people and they actually either are willing to do business with me um, and, and just take time out of their day to like, uh, I don't know. I, I really do get emotional about it. I know it sounds lame or whatever. Whoever watches this video and be like, man, Paul is a, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it, it, it's crazy to me and people take that for granted you know it's like bro do you know how hard it is to sell anything like it, it's it's difficult in my eyes and i i i don't know i guess in it maybe that's my purpose is that i want everyone to be able to sell stuff and sell cards yeah. and if because i think this group that we're in this little hobby community which it's growing exponentially every day um i i want everyone to be a part of it and and i hate it when people on it and i know that there are nasty people in the business in this business there's nasty people in all businesses though yeah. so i'm not going to be the cop or police that's gonna be like oh he's bad you know or you know whoever but i don't know just have fun man it's it's amazing it, you uh, even to sell one card it's yeah. crazy. so yeah. that that's maybe maybe it's just me wanting to have a good time and uh yeah. live in the moment for sure. With everybody. Absolutely. Sorry, that was extremely long answer to your question. I was just saying, probably we're going to get a high one in here. So, uh, <laughs> no, but let's, uh, let's move to the second question here, which you kind of mentioned a little bit, but who would you credit as kind of some of your hobby influences? Maybe it is in the stack selling, but also in collecting as a whole. Uh, number one, uh, as far as with stack selling, I'll always say it's, uh, it, that was a great influence and, help when I had a bunch of questions of how do you do a sale? How long do you keep it for? When do you close them out? What do you do for shipping? Uh, How do you ship them? Yeah. Uh, All these wild questions and uh, Dixon cards. I'll always say uh, he's an OG. Yeah. And he was the first guy that I saw selling. And I was one of the first guys I ever bought from. And um, I, he lives here in Houston um, which was hilarious when I found that out. And he just was very instrumental in the sense of like willing to answer questions, not keeping anything guarded. And it's very easy to do uh, where, where you don't want to just 
all this hard work you've created and now you're opening the door to a air quotes competitor. Um, but he was totally open book, man. You just, Hey, this is what you do. This is what I like to do. I remember I was buying, um, hustling, trying to hustle on eBay and it was so hard. And he was like, Oh, you just try this, do this, do this. I go, like, oh, man. Okay. Um, he's definitely number one. I, I, I would always give a second shout out to, uh, that has nothing really to do with my stack selling business and stuff of, of selling cards and all that shenanigans. Uh, but one of my first hobby people I ever met is Rip Heat Cards. Okay. Um, and he sold me a box of Prestige. It's either Prestige or Absolute. I can never remember. We can never remember, I don't think. He probably does. He's got a very good memory sometimes if, when you watch this. Uh, <laughs> but he, it, it, I, I bought a box at, you know, for whatever price he was selling it for. That was the times. Um, and I remember I was so excited. I was like, dude, I can't wait to open this. And if everyone's listening, I'm pretty sure it was prestige. Yes, because there was no case hit in it. Now that I know what a case hit is, <laughs> so I'm like, yes, I got this prestige. I can't wait. And I got a, you know, I hit an autograph of somebody that's absolutely atrocious. Um, and I was so excited. I remember going to my wife. I'm like, babe, I had an autograph of blah, blah, blah. Oh, you know, I think it was Eno Benjamin or somebody like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, not, not trying to hit on Eno Benjamin right now, oh, but it was I not, uh, gotcha. I, wa I wasn't hitting the big, big peach, you know, let's just say. Gotcha. And, uh, but we've become great friends since that moment. Um, and we were both in the retail chase. Uh, and it was kind of an honor amongst thieves kind of thing. I would like to say it. Honor amongst flippers. Because I feel like everyone at that time that a lot of people were, hating on the flippers and it's like bro there are so many people that were doing that that you can't really be mad at them and i didn't really care i'm like i was only mad that i didn't get there before you yeah uh, My most as long as you were doing it yeah as long as you were doing it fairly yeah. however whatever fair means in those times and he was one of those guys that was uh i felt was honest with me and genuine mm -hmm. and then uh i don't think he'll kill me for saying this but i i, I turned him on to the stack twitter area um mm -hmm. and here we are now we go to we go to dallas every uh, other month together we we drive up there alternate who's driving yeah. and um so yeah those would be my two two guys uh I, and i'd like to say that i'm influenced it's kind of weird i'm influenced by every newcomer that comes on that i see that's doing something yeah a little I, different than me I thought of yeah and it, or that's like it, you may have asked me for some advice but they took that advice and went hmm i like that but i i think i can do it better for sure and sure. that doesn't hurt my feelings like in my mind i go that's what i do yeah <laughs> that's what everybody should do they should go yeah i, li I like i like your game but i also want to add a three-pointer to it yeah you know like i love you Shaq. your your power game was great but if you had a lajuan's moves you would have decimated. And if you had Curry's shot, you'd be the greatest player of all time, you know? And I, I think that's what makes the Twitter community a little bit different than other communities is, yes, it's competition, but it's not really competition because kind of everyone does their own thing and everyone builds their own communities. There's so many different people. It's not like you're fighting for different folks. I mean, people really build their communities, their circles, and it, it's not a fight. It's It's a friendly competition. You know, it's, the boys going down to the park and playing basketball against each other. You want to win, but you're also playing because you enjoy each other's company and being around each other. So it's really a neat place. So I love it, man. And you want to do good stuff. You want to like you want to like Venn diagram the communities, yeah. if that makes sense too. You know, you like if if everyone's just competitive and like these are my people, yeah, bro, you are you are limiting. I don't mm -hmm. care if you have seven people that spend eight million dollars with you a month. Yeah, you are limiting yourself. Uh, I know that no, I mean, maybe someone's making that money out there. If you are, that's so sick. Uh, send, <laughs> send a, send a couple dollars my way. Um, but if we could like, I'm always, you know, back to your first question, it'd be like, it'd be awesome if everyone could just, if you could merge the Twitter hobby and all yeah. of us were just everyone that wanted to sell stuff, even somebody that's like, not a, this isn't their job. Yeah. You know, they're not, they're just like, Hey, I want to sell once a year. 
Mm. But I want to dip into all of your people. For Man, sure. that'd be sick, you know, because uh, I wouldn't care. I mean, if somebody does care, bro, you got some other issues going on that you just need to work out. <laughs> Go on a run or something. <laughs> oh. Well, hey, man, I want to hear a little bit about you and your collecting. So your grail card, man, what's the item for you that you've always wanted? Or maybe you have it and you're never letting it go. It's behind my head, but you probably can't see it. Here, I'll get up and get Everyone, most people know what it is. Okay, well, show it off. But it's always up there. Oh, yes. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. I'm also, you know, shameless plug here. This is the foundation I'm running for in the Chicago Marathon. Yeah, let's go. Um, but Tillman Foundation. Uh, so, yeah, Pat Tillman, if you don't know who he is, Google's really cool. Uh, it works. Um, and if you don't know who he is, you need to get some therapy. Uh, but he's uh, – it, it, it literally was the one of the cards I saw getting back into this. And uh, I'm like, bro, I got to have that card. And I remember, for me, it was so unattainable yeah. where I was in my position in the hobby. Yes, yes. Um, and I remember getting it. Rippy Cards was with me. Shout out to Rippy Cards. Um, was with me when I got it in Dallas. And it was a thing, man. I, I was like, I, that I still do business with the guy, Steven. Uh, shout out to Steven. Good dude. And Dallas, he's always there. Got has a way longer beard than I do. And uh, yeah, it's, it's something I'll never sell. Like, Yes, back to my thing where there everything has a price. It does have a price because I guess if someone gave me a million dollars, I'd go get 300 more of these if yes, I really wanted. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, but it is priceless in the sense of the memories, the collecting, and it was one of those carrots that I was really chasing. Sure. And then I got it. Now I see it, and I'm like, sweet. Uh, the other one is um, is here. I guess this would be number two. Um, okay. Yes, sir. It is. Uh, you can't really. Yeah, there's a. I, I you got can it. See it better like that. Will be awesome. um, Beautiful. You know, 2019 uh, Kobe Auto. Uh, it's a great set. I, I I would love to complete the set. Mm. It, it'd be very difficult. I've had this card three times in uh, this year. This past year, I've had it three times. I had it once. I I sold it. That's how oh. much it meant to me. Um, but the price was right. Uh, I sold it again, and then I found it again. Uh, the second one I, I I bought on eBay raw and I graded, and nice. I said, you know, what? I'm never selling this one. Yeah. And somebody wanted it, uh, and they bought it. Um, and then I found this one in Burbank, sitting at a trade night, nice. and I I bought it again. Love um, it. Yes. Uh, so th those are probably my two favorite cards. If if I ever could get the uh kobe in the bathroom sitting at, with a leather jacket uh that's literally the chase card of this set sure. uh, in my opinion yeah. and it there, it's talk about an unattainable card i mean you're, you're talking about uh, i mean i've seen that card sell for thirty thousand dollars at in dallas uh in a mm. bgs eight mm. so it's a crazy card these are two probably my biggest chasers you know for Polly donuts what he wants yeah. i mean there's always something i see i remember when i first got in what really the card that really pulled me back in the cards was um ronald acuna's 2020 tops chrome and tops card he's doing the uh oh he's yeah kind of doing the rock yeah. and roll picture yeah. i remember seeing that card right after i opened the skybox thing and i was kind of looking i think i i i either uh, pulled it out of a tops box at the time and i was like man they're making these are the pictures that come in these cards what the hell's going on here with cards i, I, I need to open more of these you know and i remember just going going through it going there's like i said before there's autographs in here there's there's jerseys you know, like, <laughs> there's pieces of their jerseys i think we were all like that when we first got back into it i mean now obviously we know the the amount that's out there. But um, I think all of us experienced a little bit of, of that like excitement for a jersey or an autograph, regardless of who it was. So um I wish I could bottle that. <laughs> yeah. Well let's well let's talk about kind of your your getting into boxes. Um let's pretend you got all the money in the world. You sold your Pat Tillman for a million dollars. You bought 30 of them and now you got all this money left over. 
What box are you going to buy for yourself and why? 2008 Topps Chrome will always be my, my go-to. There's something about that set. I okay. know it's not holy, you know, it's not exquisite or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it'd be awesome to open that if I had money. It, obviously, the question was money is no option. <laughs> um, and that would be fun. Uh, but I think the most fun I'd have is ripping a bunch of packs and hoping that I hit a Kobe LeBron for sure. Or a, I mean, it'd be great to open something, uh, you know, 86 Fleer. Sure, it would be awesome to hit a Jordan. But it, I don't know. There's something about 2008 Tops Chrome that always kind of, hmm. I don't know. I see it and I kind of go, man, those cards are sick. They just, I know they don't look that you got that kind of cheesy circular design at the top but <laughs> man they just are like a thing and yeah. that like the orange uh the orange kobe kobe yeah. lebron is such a filthy card mm. um i don't know if they made black back then or anything like that i don't think they did um obviously I, that would be number one and number two would be exquisite or or just going ham on case of the 2018 prism yeah yeah. Because it's just it's just a great rookie year for what they're turning out now. In hindsight, you know, um, oh yeah, absolutely. Seeing seeing what Luca and SGA are and Brunson yeah. and all those people, you know, that that that's probably the strongest rookie class of basketball I've seen. Yeah. We we're, we're we've seen, you know, yeah, in a minute. So yeah, no, for sure. Because the past years have been, it's been one. You know, yeah. there's been one great one, guy, or yeah. one very good guy, and then Chase. Yeah, one other guy that you're like, yeah, okay, he's good. You know, <laughs> so yeah, those are the 2008 top scrum for sure. All right, well, hey man, we got one more question for you here, and uh, oh god, get two stacking, man. That's it. Um, talk to me a little bit, and I might limit you a little bit here um, on time. Yes. But if you had to just give some advice to someone who was getting into selling sports cards uh either online or at shows kind of what advice would you throw them their way about buying and selling sports cards to sell uh on if it's online i'll stick to that for the first part if it's online uh have a plan i, I believe that in anything you're going to go out and do whatever venture it's and ain't just wing it um <laughs> and that doesn't mean you have to have all your exact cards that you're going to post that night i do it like a dj my my stuff is in a box and I grab what it's in my head and I'm like, yo, they want to see this. I'm going to drop this mm -hmm. beat right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but other people do it differently. Other people take pictures beforehand. Totally cool. But have a plan how you're going to do it. Yeah. How you're going to post it, how the pictures are going to look, what you're going to, what you're going to write in the post and yeah. then how you're going to get your money, how you're going to ship it. How do you want to invoice it? What are you going to do if somebody's late paying you? What are you going to, how are you going to handle if somebody doesn't pay you? Yeah. Um, your reputation and communication and um, your, I, I guess, uh, I'm thinking of, I guess honor is a good word. Yeah. You're just, how you're, you, you do business as a person uh, is going to speak volumes over time. In the beginning, yeah, $4 sale ain't going to be much. And it is not going to make or break you in the beginning. But a $4 sale turns into a $10 sale, a $10 into a hundred, hundred hundred into a thousand. And guess what? At the end, you have people that are wanting to communicate with you and do business with you because one, they trust you. They're yeah. sending you money, uh, usually friends and family. Yeah. Okay. I, I, when I buy cards from people, if I don't know them, especially the first couple of times, I'm very restrictive on how I move my money around to people. Um, and it, so that, that would be online. And my, I guess another little side to a part B would be um, originality. I, I kind of harp on that all the time. When I talk to people, you mm -hmm. gotta be you and you gotta find out what's you. That's kind of what I was saying before. Um, you, you, you can see other people and how they do it and they can give you all the info. But if, if I look like you, when I sell stuff to people, you've mm -hmm. already been doing this. You've already, you, man, why not just go to you? Yeah, exactly. Why not, why not just go to, you know, to shout out to some people, why not just go to Logan or Big Dog or Rip Heath or, or Dixon? Why do you want to come to me? Mm. So you, I, I think when you're selling stuff online, you, even if you are starting, I know sometimes people look at other people's posts and they're like, wow, seven people took that card. Why doesn't anyone want my cards? 
it's not you, man. It's not, it's not what's happening with what you're selling. You're not selling anything bad. Usually you just need to be patient. And like I said, man, I sold four bucks, yep. uh, you know, and, and I did that for a while. Like that wasn't like four bucks. And then I made a thousand bucks. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, you, you got to build your reputation. You got to build your name for sure. Absolutely. Pay, yeah. So patience, originality, a hundred percent, do your thing. Um, uh, there's a guy doing sales, uh, Jim, Jim, Joe, I, I, Jim Jonesy, yeah, Jim Joe. Yeah. Him in it. Jim. Yeah. Something like that. I, I love what he's doing. Uh, shout out to him. He, he was a customer of mine for a while and I th it, he still buys from me once in a while, but he, he, I like, he's doing these, uh, they're like kind of muddled pictures and he's like, guess the card you get, oh, yeah. you get it yeah. for free, you know? And I, I'm like, oh, I, I chimed in on one last night. I swear to God, I thought it was Shaq. But spoiler alert, it's easy. -E, found out today. Um, <laughs> oh, you'll probably love that if he watches this. Um, as, as far as at a show, uh, my buddy makes fun of me all the time. I, I feel like you should never be sitting down. Um, mm -hmm. Everything, you shouldn't be on your phone unless you're checking comps or something. But right. if a person walks, and, and yeah, if no one's there, if no one's walking around, sit the hell down and do whatever you got to do. But if, there's, if it's an active runway of people, I feel like you should be standing up. Your phone should be down. You should be actively looking at people and mm. hoping to engage. And if they don't, if that person walks up to your table and they don't say anything, you better be damn sure you're the one that says something is like, Hey, how's it going? What's in your case? Yeah. 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 I want to, I want to buy from you, please. Uh, yeah. it, it, you may, I, I know I have these cards out here that I really, really want you to buy, but I would love if I could give you my money. Yeah. If there's something in there, I'd like to buy um there's That's, a lot of time yeah a lot of times i walk up to tables and people don't even acknowledge me and i kind of just go nice man you must be so cool you know like how cool are you like i want to know i now i want to know why you haven't said hello because i some people i even say hello to and they're just kind of like hey i'm like man is, is it a bad is it a bad day how can i make your day better talk to me bro you're here for 10 hours I think you know? there's, there's so much to be said about that personal connection with a person. I mean, whether it be online selling, whether it be show selling, like when you make that personal connection, it just changes everything. So it is. And, um, and you never know what they're going to say. For sure. Yeah. You know? So that's my little it. tip. I love it, man. Well, uh, hey, dude, we did it. We made it through. We cleared the list. Throw it up. High five at the end. High five, man. Uh, hey, Polly, get to stacking on Twitter. Polly Donuts. Polly runs on Instagram. I encourage you guys, check him out, follow him. Like he said, hit him up, man. This, this is a community. If you got questions, ask questions. So make sure you check him out. Also, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, Dizzy Dub One. Follow me on Twitter or X at Mr. K Dub. Shout out to our high five endorsers, LJ's Card Shop, Midwest Box Breaks. Uh, Polly, man, thanks so much. I, I just, I love what you do. I love your personality. I love your style. So uh, keep it up. Get to stacking, my friend. Thanks. <laughs> All right, y'all take care. We'll catch you next time on the next Top 5.